Ladies and gentlemen, in this video I want to talk to you guys about some very intriguing rumours that I've been hearing regarding Zen 6. While Zen 5 isn't on store shelves yet, and of course won't be until next year for Granite Ridge, and those processors are certainly going to be very impressive with IPC gains etc etc. Arguably, Zen 6, while not so robust in terms of the performance upgrades, is perhaps more interesting because of the way it sets things up for subsequent future CPU generations. For example, the major changes on IOD, etc, etc. We're going to be talking to you guys a lot about that stuff in this video, as you probably guessed from the video title, and I also want to give some small updates for RDNA 4. Sure, it's not the performance monster that the early rumours were reporting, simply because the high ends got canned, as most of you know, but what they will offer are cheap GPUs, and given the absolute ridiculous prices that we've been seeing in the GPU market, that's never a bad thing. We're going to get to all of that, plus more, after this message from the video sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. I want to start things out with RDNA 4. Now, this is going to be a pretty quick update because I've already leaked a lot of the data for N48 and 44 several times now. But in the previous information that I provided, I think that I got the number of workgroup processors incorrect for N44. And I also had two configurations for the memory. So I want to give you guys the update. You can see on screen the old information. But in a nutshell, 32 workgroup processors and 20 for 48 and 44 respectively. And you can also see the memory configuration. Now that is, of course, now being updated with 32 workgroup processors and 192-bit uh, bus GDDR7 and 16 workgroup processors 96-bit bus GDDR7. That's again for 48 and Navi 44 respectively. Now I think that this is a more likely configuration set for a couple of reasons. One, I heard N44 was absolutely tiny I couldn't get an exact die size. I was just told it was really small. And also there's a bigger separation between N48 and 44. This allows AMD to maximize, well, basically profits with the 48 die uh, because obviously they can split it and segment it however they would choose. And again, the profits for N44 should be fairly decent and they can charge very little amounts of cash. There's not really any information I have new in terms of the performance. Just as a very quick reminder, um, I've heard the top end SKU based on N48 is going to be somewhere around 7900 GRI to XT. There is, however, of course, well, the fact that the cards are not released yet. So software could improve, drivers could improve, clock frequencies could improve, etc, etc, etc. So those are not final performance figures, but so far that is what's being uh, you know, talked about ray tracing again. It's still quite early at this point. It's very possible there could be some more left in the tank, but I've heard worst case scenarios it seems to perform around 10 15 percent faster. Best case scenarios is 30 percent faster, but again, it's very difficult to know exactly um, how it's going to land because again, there could be updates from the game developers, drivers, etc. etc. I will also add, just as an obvious point, but it's worth noting, that that is with a similarly configured N44X GPU versus a similarly configured N3X GPU. So that's just for your FYI. But now let's move on to the focus of the video, Zen 6. Now, unfortunately, I have a couple of conflicting pieces of information for Zen 6. And ultimately, I think some of this is because, well, there are multiple implementations of Zen 6. You'll get more what I mean by that in a second when we start to talk about servers and desktops. 
but also we are of course talking about processes which are just not going to launch you know tomorrow we're talking about an architecture that of course will succeed will be the successor if i can speak of zen 5 so obviously we're looking at a couple of years into the future with that said let's begin so zen 6 i already leaked this <laughs> back in july actually in a very odd place in a ps5 pro video well actually there was a reason because i was talking about code names for the ps5 pro and i was talking about viola was a code name i was hearing about um, because someone else was talking about venice um, and I said that the information I was hearing was Venice was for Zen 6, for a server-based processor. Now, Venice has also been used for um, an Athlon 64. I think it was only for Socket 939. It was a single-core CPU. I actually owned one. I think it was the Venice 3000. I think I overclocked it from, what was it, 1.8 to 2.7, I think, something like that was what I managed to squeeze out of it. It was a really good processor for the time, by the way. Super cheap, super powerful, uh, especially when overclocked. But anyway, outside of that, in terms of IPC figures, I don't have anything right now. It's way too early to be even slightly precise anyway. The only thing I have been uh, told regarding IPC is that the internal strategy is for Zen 6 to not be such a big leap as what we saw with Zen 4 to Zen 5, or let's say Zen 2 to Zen 3. Instead, this is going to be more, I don't want to say a stepping stone, because that is doing the architecture a disservice, but instead it's going to focus on improving the processor design, of course, in you know, the normal ways, like being more energy efficient and that type of stuff. But there will be modest IPC gains, of course. However, the majority of this work is going to be packaging, IOD changes, and basically AMD setting up Zen 7. By the way, I don't have anything on Zen 7 at this point, for those wondering. So, regular viewers will know that Granite Ridge, which of course is based on Zen 5 architecture, um, that is going to use the same IOD as what we have for Zen 4 for the desktop. There are some improvements, but basically speaking, you can kind of think of it as just better binned. It's not quite the same thing, but you get the general idea if I say that. It just means it can, it's just, it will just support slightly faster memory. I've heard, heard around 400 MTS, but yeah, whatever. Zen 6 for desktop though has a lot of big changes. Now, specifically, most of the ones I've heard about so far are the IOD packaging and general strategy so i'm told that the actual iod's themselves are now what basically are connected to the x3d packaging now i want to put a pin on that for a second because there's some mixed information and i think it's really important to add some context all the information i've been given with zen 6 is that the ccd's which i'm sure most of you guys know are the chiplets which contain stuff like the cpu cores they would go up to 32 cores, but there would also be an 8 and a 16 core variant as well. Naturally, the higher end variants would obviously be for server, but I was told that the desktop would remain at 8 cores. However, I'm now being told that this is probably untrue, and instead a single Zen 6 CCD can have up to 16 big and little cores. Now that's a mixture of both. I wanna stress that does not mean 16 big and 16 little. Um, that could be eight slash eight, it could be, you know, whatever configuration, but you know, that's the total. There's also an IGPU as well, which is on the package. Now, in terms of the packaging technology for the processor, I'm hearing a lot of similarities to what AMD have done with graphics, for example, RDNA 3. This will be more logical as we start to get further into the video, but I am told that the IOD itself is a lot more Intel-like, or at least AMD's strategy, basically speaking. Now, a second source has told me that this is most likely the case, and they've added that there will definitely an, be an iGPU on the CCD, and that the cores for the desktop, as well as Halo laptop parts, seem to only be big cores. Now, they have also said that, from their knowledge anyway, we will see for the desktop up to two CCDs per 
uh, processor for the for the highest end SKU and potentially only 16 cores 32 threads but they are not 100% certain as to the core counts but unfortunately there's been a third source which has provided some additional information they've said that there may have been some changes or that older information is incorrect now there's a lot of complexity here because as I've mentioned multiple times at this point there seems to be different implementations for Zen 6 for both uh, servers. So there seems to be several server variants, uh, Halo servers, for example, as well as, let's say, mid-range servers, if you can call the chip, which cost a couple of thousand bucks mid-range. And then, of course, you've got Halo uh, desktop parts, you've got the Halo lap, um, laptop parts, and then you've got, you know, the lower-end laptop parts. And basically, it's just so many different variants of Zen that it's possible that there is just simply misinformation that's being floated around. But, anyway, this third source has told me that there are two CCDs for the uh, processor, and those CCDs each go up to 16 cores, but they are a mixture of big slash little or high performance energy efficient cores, whatever you would like to say. So this, for example, would be an eight slash eight configuration. We would also see an iGPU as well in each of those CCDs. Now, this source is adamant that this will be for desktop parts as well as for Halo mobile SKUs. So again, unfortunately, there are a couple of different variants of what I'm being told here. And I'm giving you guys both options because I just think it's fair to you to, well, just have all the information possible since I'm not 100% certain. But there also seems to be a mixed set of CCD configurations. And those can basically have a different number of CPU and iGPU configurations. Now, I asked the source to clarify what they meant by this. And I was basically told that the server and customer parts can almost be thought of as something entirely separate. Yes, of course, when you come to, let's say, a server like Epic, you know, whatever, 64 cores, obviously it has a higher core count. And there are a number of changes that you can expect for that. For example, it's got a ditch support for additional memory channels. But it does seem that there are larger changes, and I'm not 100% certain of all of them. Now, I'm told as well that AMD were not fully sold on whether they would decide to go AM5 or a new platform. But now I'm told that a new platform has been decided upon. So I'll call it AM6 for this video, but that is not an official name. For all I know, it could be called Donald Duck. I have no official name. Um, and there are a lot of reasons behind this, but most of them come down to the new technologies. This is not AMD basically trying to wrangle more money out of you. It is essentially just platform limitations that they're dealing with. Now, I asked a source to further clarify the X3D designs and reasons, and I was told that much of it is due to a more flexible design, improvements in thermals, performance is still really good above the board, and, well, I'm still being given a lot of missing pieces for Zen 6. Now, assume my source is correct, and I will say that a couple of sources who are also pretty accurate have actually backed up a lot of this information, such as the fact that the design is mobile first. AMD seem to be creating a very flexible design. And there is a very interesting question. Would AMD actually do big slash little cores or hybrid cores or whatever terminology you want to use for desktop? Now, you can see a couple of quotes on screen. I'm not going to read out the entire quote you can see on screen, but basically AMD have essentially given two mixed statements for this. And these are from slightly older interviews which came back from earlier this month. You know, like the first the first set of quotes in some ways actually somewhat contradicts the second. However, I think that um, it's very possible that uh, AMD are simply being a little bit cagey here, but ultimately, I'm still not 100% certain whether they will just go and create a different CCD for the mobile and a different CCD for the desktop or whether it will be the same. From what I'm hearing from the newest information, it seems to be the same CCD, but I cannot be 100% certain about that. But what it does seem to be very true at this point um, is that the designs are definitely mobile focused. Now, Let's talk about some somewhat less clear information, and this brings us back to the IOD stuff. 
Honestly, I don't think I have the full story here, but I've heard um, from two different sources. Both of them are pretty accurate, I will say, but both give ever so slightly different information. So the first source tells me that there are up to two IODs on the CPU. And in essence, the vCache is essentially connected to them. So for example, there could be two vCache chips and you would have vCache 1 and vCache 2, each of course connected to their own IOD. Each controller would then handle, as I just said, each vCache chiplet, as well as a single CCD. Then naturally, there would obviously be other duties and stuff that uh, the IOD would be connected to. For example, DDR uh, memory, PCIe controllers, whatever. I do believe the memory controllers themselves are still present, however, on the actual CCDs. The second source, though, seems to indicate that this is untrue. And instead, while the X3D cache does connect to the IOD, there is only one IOD. But that IOD could handle, let's say, two cache chiplets. But there could also be um, two um, CCDs and obviously they would connect to those as well. So basically you have a single IOD, that single IOD would connect to the cache chiplets, or the, the X3D cache chiplets, excuse me, along with the various CCDs. The memory controllers still seem to be part of the CCD, and it goes without saying that of course the IOD would also connect to stuff like PCIe. Now if I had to take a guess, and I stress this is a guess, I'd probably say the second option is more likely due to lack of complexity, or should I say less complexity, not lack less. It's probably true that the IOD could also be manufactured um, for multiple different versions. So for example, a lower end IOD could potentially exist, let's say for a Ryzen 3 or whatever. Also, strangely enough, while these sources are totally different from one another, some of this information here is eerily similar to some of the leaks that I've already mentioned about the PlayStation 6 and how it seems to be handling its own cache stuff. Maybe I'll talk about that more in another video. I don't know. Well guys, hopefully you have found today's video interesting. I am always curious, of course, not just on the architectural upgrades that we can expect, but for how AMD as well as other companies are setting up technologies going forward. Now, of course, given the fact that uh, AMD will be providing the CPU and GPU technology for, let's say, the next generation PlayStation and Xbox, I think we can start to really get a good picture of what's going to be happening for the next generation of products going forward. And honestly, if these rumors are true, for example, with how the uh, X3D cache works on the IOD, I think that we could be seeing some absolutely ridiculously powerful APUs over the next couple of years from AMD. Sure, it will of course take some time before discrete GPUs in the lower end just totally and utterly disappear, especially if Nvidia have anything to do with it. But I think ultimately speaking, AMD's plans are to essentially just make sure that APUs are the breadwinners for the low-end GPU performance crowd. And we can really start to see some of this already come to pass with the rumors, of course, that we've been talking about with, let's say, Sarlacc. It's going to be an interesting couple of years to be a PC gamer. Anyway, perhaps by the time Zen 6 releases, we'll see Grand Theft Auto 6 for the PC. Alright, take care of yourselves, guys. Bye for now.